Troy Williamson, IBF European Super Welterweight Champion. Let's go, baby. So now there is officially a new king of the Super Welterweight division, the 154 pound division, and he goes by the name of Jamel Charlo after he stopped Brian Castano in 10 rounds to become the undisputed Super Welterweight division champion. Undisputed. Thus, he has put himself in a very, very short list of this particular era for belt holders, undisputed champions such as a Canelo Alvarez, a Alexander Usyk, a Josh Taylor, a Terence Crawford and so on. Very, very small list. Charlo has just done that. Now he played back the first fight. The first fight was officially a draw. I know some people may say, well, maybe Charlo just deserved it or maybe Castano just deserved it. Or maybe some people agree on a draw. It doesn't really matter. He played it back and he got the victory by knockout. This is the guy who lost to Tony Harrison. Played it back, won by knockout. He's become an undisputed champion. This is what I've been saying for a long, long time. Too many people, boxing fans, talk about how people are thrown on the scrap heap because they take a loss, because they take a draw. Oh, they're exposed. Oh, they're a bum. Oh, they're going to do this. Why? Because there's too much emphasis on that undefeated record. So there's, there's too many people out there with opinions who shouldn't have opinions. Okay, that's the reality of it. Jamal Charlo has just written himself into the history books. He has. Now, I felt that this rematch, Charlo had this fight have gone the distance, a couple more rounds. I felt that Charlo would have won this one on points. Complete contrast to the first fight for sure. But he's just written himself into the history books. He has. He's a little bit susceptible to the overhand right, I will say that much. But of course, when you compare him with his twin brother, you have to say that Jamal is now officially the big brother of this particular relationship with his twin brother of Jamal. Now, Jamal, okay, Jamal, he's a two-weight world champion. At 154, at super welterweight, yes, he became IBF champion by defeating Cornelius Bundridge. Bundridge, sorry. Who? Exactly. This is a guy who lost five fights beforehand. And who did he defend that belt against? Austin Trout? Well, okay. Julian Williams? Yeah, that was pretty decent at the time. But then, of course, he moves up. And who's he fighting at middleweight? Who did he defeat to become the WBC middleweight world champion? Absolutely nobody. He got that belt in the post after uh, fighting people like Hugo Santana Jr. Very, very contentious win over Korobov. Defeated a Brandon Adams and these kind of people, Dennis Hogan and what have you. Good win over Devrachenko. We will say that one. Juan Montiel. Behave yourself. And now, of course, you've got a fight coming up with Magic Selecki. Jamal, you need to have a little look in the mirror at your career and then compare it to your brother. Your brother is chasing for greatness. Your brother has reached for the stars and he's grabbed a bunch of them. He's grabbed four of them, to be precise. The four belts to become the undisputed champion while you haven't even unified yet. Don't be surprised if Jamal ends up vacating his, these undisputed belts, moves up, to join his twin brother in the, in the middleweight division and ends up fighting the guys that we've been wanting Jamal to fight for a long time. Don't be surprised if Jamal ends up fighting a Demetrius Andrade. Don't be surprised if he ends up fighting a Chris Eubank Jr., Triple G, and these kind of guys, a Daniel Jacobs. Don't be surprised, well, if Daniel Jacobs can make a middleweight anymore, of course, but don't be surprised if he's going to be the one to do it because he seems to have the warrior DNA while the other one just wants to protect his O. Reality. Listen, I know Jamal, he's got a lot of fans out there. Listen, I'm actually a fan of his. I rate him. He could legitimately be the best middleweight out there. Could, but he ain't proven it. He ain't. Personally, I think he should cancel this fight with Selecki because no one gives a fuck about this fight and go fight somebody with a pulse. That's what he needs to be doing. Stop waiting around for this payday for a Canelo or whoever. Stop waiting around. Go and chase greatness like... Like your brother has. His brother, Jamel, is now, he could retire right now. And he will probably get into the Hall of Fame because he's an undisputed champion. That's what you do when you chase for greatness. Taking a loss along the way. So what? Even, even had he have not avenged that loss, makes no difference. It's not where you've been, it's where you're going. So there's still time, there's still time for Jamal to go on and, and do something great, but he's in no rush by the looks of it. At least Jamel, no matter what he does now, even if he loses his next 
Five fights on the bounce, by knockout. Doesn't matter. Undisputed champion is on his record. Not many people will become a world champion, let alone an undisputed champion. So congratulations to him. It was a bit of a backwards and forwards uh, rematch. I think a lot of people who maybe felt he was going to win the first fight, I certainly felt that, that he was going to win the first fight with Brian Castano. Maybe we all overlooked Brian Castano. We didn't realise how good he actually is. Okay, but he is actually a very good fighter. He came to fight. He came to win. He gave everything that he possibly could for Jamal. But Jamal, Jamal, sorry, had the answers. And the ultimate answer is he stopped him in 10 rounds and become an undisputed super welterweight champion of the world. Drop your thoughts below, click thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.